Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Contest going to be held right smack dab in the shady rest lobby a week from tonight. Oh, oh my God! Let's not get too down. Let's not get too excited till we hear more of the facts. Like, um, how come it's being held here, and are we making money or losing money? Well, it's being held here because I ran into the fellow that's putting on the contest. I sold him a bill of goods on using the hotel instead of the town hall. Yeah, well, that takes care of the how come part. Now, how about the money part? Kate, we're getting paid off in something even better than money. What's better than money? <laughs> Publicity. People will be buying meals and renting rooms and spending all kinds of money. Well, maybe so. Well, we're stuck with it anyway. <laughs> hey, look at this. First prize, $50. Mom, can I enter the contest? Gee, Mom, I'd like to, too. Me, too. No, I just don't think it'd be a good idea for you girls to enter that contest. But why not? We've got some talent, Mom. Sure you have. How could you be related to me and not be talented? That would be astonishing, wouldn't it? All you gotta do when you get out there, just remember you're carrying on the tradition of Joseph P. Carson, the Yankee Doodle Dandy. Didn't they call George M. Cohan the Yankee Doodle Dandy? Yeah, him too now and then. Hey, why don't you let the girls have a try at it? Look, Mr. Show Business, I'm not saying the girls don't have talent. I'm just saying I don't want them in that contest. One of them might win. That means the other two have to lose. And I can't think of a better way to create hard feelings in a family. But, Mom, we don't care about winning. Of course not. We just want the fun of being in the contest. Yeah, Kate, okay. do you want to frustrate him? Oh, come on, Mom. We wouldn't have a chance of winning anyway. That's right. Charlie and Floyd are bound to get into the contest. And you know how terrific they are at entertaining and how popular they are with everybody? That's true. Floyd and Charlie would be hard to beat. And another one who's a cinch to beat us out is Tad Whipple. Remember how the audience went wild over his singing at the PTA meeting? Yeah. Tad might run away with it at that. Hey, what about Mabel Snark? Oh, she's sure to be in the contest. And she won first prize in yodeling at the county fair last year. Yeah, there'll be a lot of people in that contest hard to beat. Oh, what do you say, Mom? Let us enter just for the fun of it. Well... Since you're all so anxious and you're not going to try and beat each other out, I guess it'll be all right. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want you getting worked up over it. It's just a little amateur contest, and that's all. Cross the right, okay, That's good. Now let's get back to work. Yeah. <laughs> but by the way, Uncle Joe, what's the big idea of trying to give the girls the impression you were on the stage? Well, I was at one time. Driving or riding shotguns? <laughs> Passenger. <laughs> well, your mom's a nice little woman and she means well, but she doesn't understand that you're grown up. You can handle competition amongst yourselves. Of course we can. And you know, mom did treat us like little children, didn't she? Yeah, so we're still little kids who squabble at the drop of a hat. Now, this here's a great chance for you to prove to her that you're mature and can handle victory or defeat. You're right, Uncle Joe. Yeah, you bet that $50 first prize I'm right. You know, Mom could sure use that $50 right now. Yeah. I just see how proud she'd be if one of you came up and handed her that first prize money. The other two standing off there smiling in gracious defeat. But, Uncle Joe, even if we did work hard and, and rehearse and knock our brains out to win, what about Charlie and Floyd and, and Tad Whipple and Mabel Snark? Oh, I wouldn't worry about them. I got inside information they may not even enter the contest. No 
kidding, Uncle Joe. Hey, girls, that means it's wide open. Well, what do you say? Should we really go after that first prize? With everything we've got. And who knows? Maybe one of us will get to go to Chicago and be on TV. Oh, that reminds me, girls. If the winner's underage, he or she gets to take an adult companion to Chicago with them. Oh, wouldn't Mom love Chicago? Oh, yes. Oh, I don't think your mother likes Chicago. You know, eating in strange places, wind blowing her hair all over the place. <laughs> oh, Uncle Joe, come on. She'd have a ball. Yeah, that's right. After two days there, she'd ball her eyes out. <laughs> You'd best take somebody along that can manage your career in case you win in the finals. Somebody with a show business background. That sounds like you, Uncle Joe. Me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does, don't it? <laughs> well, maybe if one of you wins, I'll consider going back with you. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Joe. You're great. Come on, kids, let's get started rehearsing. <laughs> Windy City, oh, that Windy City, Chicago. Always wanted to see that town. <laughs> well, Joe, just what kind of a favor do you want from Floyd and me? Favor? What makes you think I want a favor? Number one, you never rode up in front before. Number two, the first time you ever brung us any food. And number three, you're being uncommon pleasant. There is a teensy weetsy little favor I'd like to ask. Lloyd, do you want to ask him what it is, or should I make the mistake? I reckon it's your turn, Charlie. I asked him a boy, remember? Oh, stop your clowning, fellas. I just wanted to ask you not to enter that talent contest. That's all. Why shouldn't we be in it? Yeah, we're fixing to win that $50 first prize. Not if you're friends of Kate, you won't. How's that? Well, Kate's girls are entering the contest. And I'm not sure how she'd take it if one of them didn't win. You mean Kate don't want us to compete against the girls? Well, she'd never admit it. I thought it was my duty to tell you. Personally, I don't care who wins the contest. Well, if Kate don't want us in that contest, we sure enough won't enter, will we? No, we sure won't. Here, uh, have another sandwich. <laughs> number? Well, I'd be glad to, honey, but I don't have any material. Oh, I just happen to have a few hundred yards. <laughs> well, I need a costume for the contest, too. Well, I don't think I'd have time to make costumes for both of you. Wait a minute. I'm in that contest, too, and I haven't got a thing to wear. I asked first. I'm the oldest. Yeah, but what counts is who needs it the most. Come on, Mama. Wait a minute, Mom. Girl! Simmer down. There's only one way to settle this. It's all yours. Oh, oh, good. good. Hey, wait a minute. I should wear this by age. I'm the old man. Now, what you call that? Here you are, Mom. Yes, sir, Mrs. Whipple. Yes, sir. Your boy Tad's a sizzling sis to run away with that contest. Yeah, it sure pleased me to see him win. That poor boy works hard around here, help me with everything. He deserves a chance to show off a singer now and then. I'm real glad to hear that. For a while there, some of us were worried for fear you weren't going to let him enter. Well, so long, Mrs. Whipple. Dad. Uh, wait a minute. Why is you afraid I might not let him enter? Oh, it was nothing. Just some of the folks around here got some silly notions about Dad. Didn't mount anything. See you later, boy, at the contest. Uh, uh, hold on. <laughs> what kind of silly notions? Well, it's the general opinion around here that Tad's starting to get the swell head. Once he wins this contest and goes on to Chicago, he'll never come back. Not come back? Why wouldn't he? Well, everybody knows he'll win the Chicago contest, too. And from there, it's on to Hollywood for your little boy. Hollywood? And it's the same old story. Fame, fortune, forgetting your family, your friends. Well, it didn't cross my mind that... Once you're out there, it's one Hollywood party after another. No more letter writing, no more phoning, no more nothing. <laughs> oh, my little Tad. Now, don't carry on, Mrs. Whipple. Maybe you can keep track of him by reading them movie magazines. Find out which Hollywood parties he's been going to. Tad Whipple? Yeah, Ma? You hear me good. You ain't gonna enter that talent contest. Well, why not? Because I said so, that's why. 
and you get rid of that swell head of yours before I take a switch to you. Wow. Be quiet and get back to milking your cow. <laughs> I'd watch him, Mrs. Whipple. That boy has a wild look in his eye. <laughs> Surely, said I. Surely there is something at my window lattice. Oh, let my heart be still a moment in this mystery explore. It is the wit. Mother, what are you doing? I'm rehearsing. That's just what your sisters would like to do, too. They can have it tonight. When? Like we got it last night at 11 o'clock? Mom, make her take that spooky record off there, will you? So you can put that silly dance record of yours on there? Oh, oh no! Oh. My record's going on next. Oh, I have a lot of Girls! <laughs> Yep, I'm sure glad I ran into you like this and got it firsthand that you'd heard about the contest. It wouldn't be much without Mabel Snark. Oh, thank you. But that $50 first prize is worth yodeling for. Then I can tell the man who's running the contest that you'll be in it and not in Groverdale that night? You bet! <laughs> uh, what's going on in Groverdale? Well, there's a bachelor's convention. A couple of hundred wealthy playboys getting together at the Groverdale Hotel. A couple of hundred? Yeah. Well, I'm glad to see you're not like a lot of other single women around here, fixing to make a 600-mile trip just to snag a wealthy husband. You know, I've never been to Groverdale. Uh, is that all it is, really? Just 600 miles? Yeah. Now, I'm helping out with lining up the program. Would you like to be spotted before or after the jug blowing act? The Groverdale Hotel, you say? Huh? Oh, yeah. Now, I figure the best spot's before. You see, when you... Forget it, the best spot's Groverdale. And you mean you ain't gonna be in the contest? Oh, I'm gonna be in the contest, all right. <laughs> the one in Groverdale. <laughs> I wonder which one of the girls be going to Chicago with me. <laughs> Kate? That's a fine-looking little stage. You did a good job. Well, thanks, Kate. Well, Kate, you must be just plumb wore out working to get ready for this contest. Oh, that's not the work, Charlie. But I've just about reached the end of my rope with those three girls of mine. The girls taking part in a little spirited rivalry. That's what Kate means. They've been impossible is what I mean. Now, I'm counting on you two boys to be so good tomorrow night that you're going to beat them a country mile. Why, Kate, we're just playing to accompany the contestants. Didn't Joe tell you? Kate, the boys must be hungry. Why don't you hop out the kitchen and get them a bite to eat? Are you saying you're not competing? Better start hopping, Kate. But you boys have got to be in the contest. We thought you didn't want us competing with the girls. Where in the world did you ever get an idea like that? Maybe, maybe I'll hop out the kitchen. Hold it, Uncle Joe. With the turn things have taken, I'm beginning to feel your strong hand of navigating. Kate, your conclusion's jumping again. Good jumping, I'd say. Oh, Uncle Joe, I know it'd mean a lot to you if one of the girls would win. But removing all competition's no way to do it. You know a better way? I know I want my girls to start acting like real sisters again. And not like three cackling hens pecking at the same kernel of corn. Now, you boys have got to promise me to enter the contest. Well, all right, Kate, if that's the way you want it. Yes, and I'd be obliged if you'd give me a ride on the cannonball. Sure thing, Kate. Where are we going? To talk to the rest of the competition. I want to be sure this is going to be a wide-open, square-deal contest. Kate, before you go, I want to tell you something. What? Don't. <laughs> Sometimes her idea of honesty and fair play is downright sickening. <laughs> Thanks, folks, and welcome to the Shady Rest. Now, I've been asked to help out with a master of ceremony and chores by my good friend, Mr. J.P. Anderson from Chicago. <laughs> now, the first act on the program is Leota Linkwhip and her musical jugs. Let's give the little lady a great big hand. Yes. 
Estes, young Tad Whipple. He's a kind of a singer. <laughs> Do the best you can, Tad, my boy. <laughs> Tad Whipple, folks. Nice try, Tad. Better luck next time. <laughs> We're coming to Bobby Joe Bradley, one of the three highlights of the evening. She'll sing a song for you in her own prize-winning style. I give you Miss Bobby Joe Bradley. wonderful phrase to hear those three little words that's all I'd live for the rest of my days and what I feel in my heart they tell sincerely no other words can tell it half so clearly three little words eight little letters which simply mean I love you one Two, three little words, eight little letters, which simply mean I love you. That was Miss Bobby Joe Bradley, folks. There's no question about it, that girl has some real talent. Now we come to uh, a yodeler. Mabel <laughs> Snark is the name of this contestant. There's always a few people in the audience who enjoy yodeling. So let's give a fine hand to Miss Mabel Snark. Friends, we present the blonde bombshell of the Shady Rest doing her condensed but exciting version of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Miss Billy Joe Bradley. <laughs> Sorry, honey. What am I going to do now, Uncle Joe? I can't perform without my music and my sound effects. Kate and Floyd and Charlie can play the music for you. And Floyd's pretty good with sound effects. I'll have him put in a few. Okay, Uncle Joe, I'll try. Okay, folks, we have a technical problem. We'll have it fixed in just a second. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly nappy. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, there came a tapping. <laughs> Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. But it was Floyd, nothing more. <laughs> Open here, I flung the shutters. <laughs> but it was Floyd. Nothing more. <laughs> Quoth the raven. <laughs> Never more. And it's Billy Joe Bradley, folks. A great dramatic actress and a brilliant comedian. And I'm sure we'd all be proud if Billy was to carry our colors to Chicago. Thank you. That was Person Treadwell and his singing song. Personally, I like real singing myself. Now it's my pleasure to introduce that gifted and talented other Bradley sister, Miss Betty Jo Bradley. Thank you. 
Well, folks, that was the last of the big three. Now we have, oh yeah, a couple of swell guys we'd all like, even if they didn't run the only train between Hooterville and Pixley. Charlie Pratt and Floyd Smoot. How well do I remember the fire of 58? He's coming down through the mire. When along comes Hank, just a going to beat the cars. And he says, I gosh, there's a the fire. Well, I runs home and I puts my gum boots on. She says, my gal, I read. How well do I remember the fire of 58? When we ran with the old machine. When we ran with the old machine, hot ziggity, when we ran with the old machine, there was Hank and Frank and Cy, eating Bill and I, when we ran with the old machine. Well, folks, that was the last act of the evening. And even though they ain't as young or pretty or quite as talented as the Bradley sisters, you gotta admit they're pretty good. <laughs> now, folks, there'll be a short intermission and then the judging. Do you think I have a chance to win? Gee, I hope I have a chance. I've sure got my fingers crossed. I'm hoping that I... Wait a minute. Look at what we're doing. We're all saying I, not we. We're all worried about only ourselves. You know, that isn't like us. Mom was right. And if one of us wins, it could get worse. Well, what do you say we all drop out of the contest? I second that. I third it. Well, let's go tell Mom. Right, right, right. Mom, we've decided we don't want to be included in the judging. Oh, but you all did so well. Any one of you could win. Well, that's just it, Mom. We don't want any one of us to win. And we don't want any one of us to go to Chicago, either. We figure maybe we'll all get to visit there one of these days, together. Girls? What? what? Welcome back to the family. <laughs> you girls are just great, all three oh, of you. Joe, come here. You're a Josh. <laughs> all three? <laughs> now, judging from your applause, the winner is Pat Whipple. Congratulations, Pat. Here's a 50. Thanks. Have you got anybody in mind to go to Chicago with you yet, Tan, my boy? Yeah, my ma. Send me a postcard, will you? <laughs> now, folks, the Bradley sisters will finish off the evening with their version of the Hooterville Cannonball. There's a train that runs through this wide valley that is loved by one and all. It's the train that starts way up in Pixley called the Hooterville Cannonball. Well, she makes her run through the dead of winter, through the summer, spring, and fall. Neither cold nor heat nor flood can stop her. She's the Hooterville This has been a Filmways presentation.